All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, today we are continuing our discussion on the autobiography of Malcolm X, chapter four, which is titled Laura. Um, in this chapter, we really begin to see the life of Malcolm X unfold like a movie or a storybook. And I don't think he's embellishing. I don't think he's exaggerating or making it look more beautiful than it is, but I think he's just reflecting upon his life and documenting it. And I think all of us, if we reflect upon our lives and properly document it, we will do the same thing. There's so many beautiful lessons, even though this is this chapter is very short. Um, and I sent some questions, uh, and I will go over them right now before we actually, um, as I go over the um, uh, a very quick intro into what uh, or summary of chapter four. Some of the things I really want you to focus on is uh, the development of Malcolm X's uh, confidence and self-esteem, his exposure to diverse demographics, his struggles to fit into these demographics, his influences from different people, the environment, culture, places, etc. Additionally, uh, leadership skills that he gains in chapter four. One other thing that I want you to pay attention to is uh, the paradoxes, you know, things not seeming the way um, the way it appears to be. That's what I mean when I say paradox. It's, uh, it looks one way, but in reality, it's something else. Um, and that's how life is and, and, and in reality. So the chapter begins, chapter four, with basically um, his friendship with Shorty really growing. Shorty is showing him around. And uh, we really want to talk about that later on, too. And he's now getting introduced to another crowd. Uh, so he's starting to gamble, drink, smoke, weed, sell uh, these things um, as well. However, before this chapter, Malcolm X has never danced. And he had this fear. You, If you remember in the past, he mentioned that. So one of the things that he hasn't been exposed to is dancing. And another one is girls. Remember the girls who liked him, he didn't really like them and, and vice versa. So the girls who he didn't really like, they probably hate him. This is gonna change uh, in this, this chapter. Uh, so he learns how to dance. He's just, <laughs> basically he's forced to. Uh, he goes to uh, one of these dances. And obviously we know he's a shoe shiner, so he, he's right there. And a girl pulls him to the floor, basically, and he is an instant success. What's interesting, we can talk about this later, is that Malcolm X mentions very clearly, and it seems very racist, that he says, Black people naturally can dance. I should have known I can dance. Um, and that's something we can talk about later. But he said, yeah, that's like in our genes that we can dance. Is that true? Um, that's, just hold that, that thought. So anyway, that's how it really opens, that he really becomes exposed to this new demographic uh, of like those who are somewhat criminal elements and street people, let me put it that way. Uh, and he's starting to fit in and to really learn his ways and become well. At the same time, remember he has a, um, uh, a uh, he quit, excuse me. So at the same time, he, he falls in love with dancing so much that he quits his job the, of shoe shining. And his sister Ella is very happy because she felt that that was beneath him, even though it gave him a lot of exposure and a lot of benefits. If you, and we can talk about that later. Uh, I would love for you to, to talk about that. Uh, I'm almost wanting to jump the gun and tell you all those things he benefited shoe shining. It wasn't what it seemed to be. This is a lot more if you read the book than actually shining shoes. That's not how he made his money. Uh, but anyway, uh, he quits his job because he really wanted to pursue dancing. He loves it so much. Uh, Ella, his sister, is so happy 
And also, Shorty, his best friend at this time, is happy too. And, is, and he knew he would outgrow that job and become something bigger. So Ella finds a job for, for him working on the other side of town, another demographic, another type of people. And this was pretty much, quote unquote, the upper um, a little bit middle class, I guess, uh, African American crowd, uh, the heel. So, but it's a it's a job working as a soda fountain clerk at a drugstore. Uh, he didn't like it. He thought he thought these people were fake, and all these people, you know, even though they may have been um, somewhat better off than the poor people that lived in a the town, they didn't have anything too. And then. Uh, that's just for interest. We say we say that a lot about even people who do have a lot. That is it's really fake. So, but he noticed that, and um, he he mentioned that he really didn't like it. However, there was a girl, hence <laughs> named Laura, hence uh, the chapter that used to come in on a regular basis uh, to buy banana split, <laughs> and she was different. She seemed to be um, authentic. Um, and he, 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 he liked her. It took him a, a little while to strike up a conversation to really understand that she was authentic and she had a lot of good things going for her. Um, she's always come in with books and read and she was somewhat an intellectual and she wanted to go to college. And that reminded Malcolm X of that old him who was also an intellectual and very good at school. And so she motivated um, him to make a... Um, I guess somewhat a long story short and to really move on quickly because uh, I really wanted to mention those other points. Um, he winds up um, finding out she likes to dance, but uh, which is interesting because she has a grandma who's very religious. And again, I, I want you to think about this. She thought the grandmother was very strict and over religious, over protective. Uh, uh, I want to ask, is, is that really the case? So, so she didn't think her mother would, uh, grandmother would let her do those types of um, things. Remember the, the the day and age at that time as well. So, but eventually she goes, uh, she lies to her grandmother and goes dancing and Malcolm X dances with her. Malcolm X now, again, he's a new dancer, but he is, is, is excellent. He's one of the best. Uh, I remember he claims that this is just everyone's DNA, but he finds out that Man, Laura can really dance. She's one of the most talented girls. I mean, he just touches her, this Lindy hopping, uh, he calls it. And it takes some coordination. And, and, and even though he says it's, um, uh, it's not as uh, choreographed and organized as he um, thought it was. But anyway, the point is that she was wonderful. She had a good time. And she comes to him the next time and says, hey, Duke Ellington is, uh, I want you to just, just perform and I want you to take him to this dance. So she, um, this time, oh, I forgot to tell you, when Malcolm X takes her to the dance the first time and he, and, and remember the, the girl, um, um, he lies or she lies to her grandmother, um, he, picks her up and takes her to his house while he changes. And Ella, his sister, uh, sees her and she falls in love with her. Like, wow, this lady is, you know, she got it all. She has her head on right. She's studious. She's this. And she's happy for uh, Malcolm X. And Malcolm X just left this job. Now he's working on the hill. He finds this good girl. Everything's going right, according to Ella. Anyway, the second time they began um, to dance. Um, she tells her grandmother the truth, fusses, argues with her, and it uh, just like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And what happened, we don't know the detail, but it was a, a commotion. And um, um, that riff started. She went, and to make a long story short again, uh, she was fantastic. As a matter of fact, the first time when the best of the best came out, she stepped back and Malcolm X was dancing with this other girl. So she didn't really like that. We sense this time she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to be, um, 
at that stage when you have only the best of the best. Now it takes a lot of stamina. You wear yourself out. And it's actually played against her. Uh, both times, basically, another girl was with Malcolm X. So anyway, to, to make a long story short, she danced and Malcolm X, they danced um, and they were fantastic to the point where uh, Malcolm X mentions even Duke Ellington basically recognized like, wow, that was awesome. They go crazy. And he explains it very beautifully. Anyway, right after that, I mean, he, he's so enthused and so happy and thrilled, and this was amazing, but this white girl, beautiful white girl, he says, just boldly looked at him. And this was something that was strange back then. If you were with, and according to him, um, this normally happened from white girls who were prostitutes or uh, was from that class. And he mentioned this somewhat very explicitly. But this girl was uh, wealthy, wasn't um, uh, blue collar, and yet she um, wanted him. And she asked to dance. She wasn't that good, but he lied and said she was. And basically, he told Laura, I'll take you home. And he, he um, was going to rush back and be, meet with this girl, he, who he calls Sophia. And... Um, Anyway, he um, begins to go out with Sophia and, and he begins to become the name of the city because he's with a white girl who's beautiful, who has money and who's not a tramp. And so this is something that is uh, amazing. He gains a lot of points uh, uh, because of that. Uh, and his status is raised. He said, interestingly, <laughs> that people admired him and, and got a little close to him, but they wanted his white woman. That's the way it was said. Uh, so it wasn't that they really liked him. They wanted a chance to have what he had. But then we find out that he moves in with Shorty on um, Sophia's money, uh, with Sophia's money. She's basically um, paying for everything. And, um, and with that, basically, the... Um, after ends, but it ends with him saying also that he forgot about Laura, and he said, "I, I, 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 I was embarrassed." Right after that amazing time, and he, I mean, Laura was everything, but he said instantly when he saw that that beautiful white woman, he just forgot about Laura, and he said, "I'm ashamed of that," and he went back to um, he went back to. Um, to, to Sophia, and, and he said they went with her in her convertible and, and they had a good time. Um, and they spent time um, together regularly. But he mentions, he concludes the chapter also by saying that Laura, uh, one, she figures out what's going on. We, 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 we seem, because she never comes back to the drugstore. And Laura, who had her head on straight, who was a good woman now remember she had this rift with her grandmother and now she becomes um, she leaves school um, she becomes a dropout uh, she struggles she begins to use drugs alcohol and even worse of all she becomes a prostitute so this girl from all with all this potential winds up being in the worst situation you can be in um, in America and in Boston at, at that time. It's amazing how, again, things change. And even we know that some people are religious and they've changed. And this thing follows through as well. And I want you to focus on that. You think about Shorty. Is he, uh, I'll, 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 um, I'll ask you this question, but all these people, we have this stereotype, this image of them. We think something, but they don't always follow this, the, 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 this, the script. That's what I'm, trying to say and uh sometimes it's, it's, it's very sad but i think we'll stop here and we will um open the floor for for questions so let me uh, or i guess uh, kenneth you have to stop it since you are doing the facebook live